Anya, back again, bros, back again. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, today I got so, parang down, kasi de ba? I was looking through the. Basta, I was so down with the Marcos thing, but I have to just finish this, okay? I have to finish this because I want some people to understand. Yung mga tao, de ba? Na there's two sides, okay? There's always two sides to everything, and this is the second part of the Marcos uh, era, okay? So I'm gonna read through this article and uh, give you guys some insight, and um, in the end, going to talk about the Marcos times and how that was kind of different. What happened, talaga, to Korea and um, uh, what do you call this, uh, Marcos, right? So here we go. One of those. So it was uh, the PCGG, right? They got help from its staff and allies. A financial aid, Ro Rolando Gapud, gave them details of the five Swiss banks by Marcos standards. They did not contain very much, only 356 million US dollars, okay? And the banks refused to hand it over. All the PCCG could do was persuade a Swiss court to freeze the accounts. Caput and others began to disclose the scale of Marcos's ownership of the Philippine economy, okay? Philipp In Manila, the government set up an anti graft court. By the end of 1986, the PCCG was opening cases against Marcos and his network. So the PCCG, guys, PCGG is you know, trying to get the money um, that Marcos, you know, hid and stole okay. from the country. One of those who came forward was Oscar Carino, former manager of the New York branch of the Philippine National Bank. In a sworn statement, he claimed he had created accounts for two fictitious companies to conceal the Marcos millions. So he helped Marcos steal money. Okay, you have to understand who is good guy, who is bad guy, okay? If you help Marcos at that time and your family helped Marcos to steal some money or you are linked with Marcos in any way you have to think is this guy good or bad I don't care if he now is anti Marcos okay I don't care if he changed the party 5,000 times from Nacionalista to Democrat to you know all those like there's 67 parties and people keep changing and it makes it confusing for the for the voters for the citizens to know what you really stand for i don't care all i care about is if you were part of something to do with marcos whether it's bank agriculture infrastructure finance you know the whole economy or whatever link there is something you have to pay for okay it's 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 you, because it, you, you, you guys stole, right? It's not just Marcos who stole. Marcos can't steal $10 billion. You have to know it's not only Marcos, guys. That's huh? Right. He cannot steal $10 billion. He's just one person. He needs an infrastructure, a system to do that. And there's people, many people working for him in the military, in the you know uh, finance departments, in all the uh, government departments. And maybe even um, businesses, right? So just think about that, please, okay? It emerged that the paintings had changed hands with the help of some powerful connections. The court heard that some part had been played by Adnan Khashoggi, the notorious Saudi arms dealer. An Australian TV program claimed that dozens of Marcos paintings had been flown out of the U.S. on a private plane. 38 others had been shipped from Hawaii, acting on a request from the PCGG. French police raided two of Khashoggi. Shogi's apartments and found paperwork confirming that many of the masterpieces were now in his hands. Kashogi argued that he had made bona fide purchases from the couple of the paintings and four and of four Manhattan skyscrapers. So Marcos owned four Manhattan skyscrapers. But the US authorities claimed that the documents he produced to support this has been backdated and formally accused him of obstructing the course of justice. Khashoggi was arrested in Switzerland and ex extradited to New York where he joined Marcos, Imelda, and a network of others indicted under anti racketeering law. But Ferdinand Marcos died in September 1989. Before the case come came to trial, he died. He was 72 and had been in a hospital in Honolulu for months. Without Marcos, some evidence became inadmissible. There were reports that the White House was leaning on the prosecutors to go soft. The U.S. White House said go soft that there was too much potential embarrassment for the last five u.s presidents okay okay the five presidents 
might have had something to do with Marcos. I'm telling you, if you are stealing in that scale, you're getting help not only from Philippines but from powerful people, right? Because it's it's pera lang, de ba? So, who doesn't like pera? Okay. Imelda told the court she was a poor widow who knew nothing about her husband's activities. Putang ina talaga, no? Before I continue, I want to name the five presidents in Marcos' time. Ronald Reagan. So, 1965, you have Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, and Ronald Reagan. Okay? And even George H. W. Bush. That's 1989. So, these guys. One, two, three, four, five. Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan. Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, Jared Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan. I'm not saying that they had anything to do with Marcos, but there are some pictures with Reagan and Marcos and Imelda. So, just use your imagination, okay? Ah. Imelda told the court she was a poor widow who knew nothing about her husband's activity. This does make sense, okay? Khashoggi protested his innocence and was acquitted of any offense. The transcript of the trial runs to thousands of pages. It ended in July 1990 with all the defendants declared not guilty on all courts. Woo! You have accounts of fraud, of corruption, of stealing. Now... This is not only the Philippines. This goes beyond the Philippines. And the US motherfuckers were part of this shit. Okay? The US authorities agreed to take no further legal action if Khashoggi surrendered the paintings and skyscrapers. What the fuck? You just... Okay, let's say I... So I killed somebody. Or I, I stole something. Okay? That's not belonging to me. Okay? And I stole a lot of it. $10 billion worth of shit. Right? And I get caught and say and he said, Okay, if you give back it's okay. Is that okay? <laughs> Ina? Is that okay, bros? What about the opportunity costs of that money? That's you have to pay for that shit. That choice. That immoral, corrupted mother. Mmm. Is that okay? But when the skyscrapers finally sold, it turned out that they had been mortgaged to the hilt by the Marcuses. The city demanded unpaid property taxes. Though the building's total price price was 50 million US dollars, the Philippine reached people received only 5.7 million. 50 million, they only received 5.7, like 10%. Most of the dozens of paintings Khashoggi is believed to have handled were no longer in his possession, so he sold it again. The PCG received just 26. Yes. So good. For the investigators, this was a frustrating journey. Aquino's government, which had launched the commission, in the heat of revolution, rapidly stepped on the brake. So rapidly stepped on the brake. Aquino rapidly stepped on the brake. Her supporters say they were no option. Marcos and his cronies owned so much of the economy and the country that to seize their assets would crash the banks because Marcos owned the banks. Her critics, meanwhile, argue that her government was always compromised. Compromised meaning that they were also the same shit. <laughs> The Kinos were one of the wealthiest families in the country. Putang ina. I thought you were, ano ha, Wakino. I thought you were good, ha. Parehas lang pala yan. Putang ina. Woo. Same. Same lang. Putang ina. They're the same. Even worse. Because they're pretending to be against, diba? Pero they're compromised. Meaning that they're just the fucking, doing the fucking shit. Pretending to... Take shit back, but kuya ten thousand lang. Oh, sige, sige. That's the same shit, cause they're wealthy. Whatever the motive, because they're maginoo sa. They're the same one. They're the maginoo, maginoo. They're the they're just the rich motherfuckers. I mean, I'm not going against the rich. Ha? I love rich people, but you have to be morally rich, de You have to make the good choices, de Sobra naman. Whatever the motive, the PCGG was ordered to seize nothing but instead to work through the courts. Over the following few years, it became clear that this had handed the initiatives 
to the Marcoses who had the money to hire the very best lawyers because they owned everything. Soon dozens of cases were sidetracked by endless technical arguments. So it's just delay, 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 delay. Voila! Just as Marcos' wealth was too great to seize, so his political influence was too big to beat. Two weeks after revolution, a source in New York had shown the PCCG a report revealing that even before he was deposed, his allies in the U.S. intelligence, CIA, so intelligence, FBI, CIA, were aware that he had stolen up to $10 billion. So they were aware. The U.S. intelligence was aware that he stole to $10 billion. But the CIA refused to disclose what they knew. The Japanese government made it clear to Okino that they were not going to hand over information and aid packages could be je in jeopardy if the PCGG pushed too hard. So Japan! Same lang yo, Japan! How much did you make from Marcos? How much? What? Now what? Do you own the country too? You own the highways? You own the shit? Toyota! How much did you make? In the UK, Margaret Thatcher's government said it was not our business. Ooh, UK dead! Not our business! Fuck. Look at that. That's Marcos and Imelda and uh, Ronald Reagan, huh? The problem for these governments... Oh, calm down. Calm down. Fuck. No split na ako dito, guys. Fuck. This is not even like 100 years ago, ha? Huh? This is just like 30 years ago. Putang ina. 40, 50 years ago lang to. Walang, walang iba. The problem for these governments was that they had turned a blind eye while their companies had waded into the muck alongside Marcos. They turned a blind eye. Why? Parehas lang, ha? Parehas lang yon. Taking his money without asking where it came from. In some cases, Marcos in turn had paid bribes to senior politicians and made illegal contributions to election campaigns, including those of President Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. Pera lang yon. Ill illegal donation. Marcos is smart, ha? He's smart. So he's making all these connections to own everything. His plan maybe was to own US nga eh. Cause why? Cause he could vote the... He, the Philippines was so rich. Like you heard those like scandal, like Russian president is, you know, uh, paid for Donald Trump's campaign. Why? That was Philippines, bros. That's how powerful Philippines was. You could, you could, you, Marcos, if he wanted to, he paid the election campaign to vote for the president of the United States. Putang ina. So, paano yun? That's why CIA was together with them. Because what the fuck? There's a lot of agriculture. There's a lot of businesses happening. It's a lot of, it's a good country, right? And they're getting paid. Everybody on the top of officials. A PCGG veteran of nearly 30 years has a special frustration with the U.S., he says they have never handed over all the paperwork seized from Marcos when he arrived in Hawaii. And he flicks through the copies and he sees... See? Walang, so he, they took out the pages. That's not even everything. They, they're hiding evidence. That's also a fucking crime. Some pages which are blank, some inventory pages which are blank. We think that they have redacted transactions involving U.S. organizations. So yung mga U.S. na corruption, they took it out. Of course, the president said, what the fuck? Shut the fuck up. They were partners in theft, and he pauses to consider how the U.S. would react if some other nation seized evidence of their most prolific criminal and handed it over in redacted form. It's getting worse, guys. By the autumn of 1991, Imelda Marcos was feeling sufficiently safe to go back to the Philippines with three adult children. In New York, the PCGG picked up rumors that some of the paintings were still there. In 1991, the PCGG couldn't even do shit and get the fucking paintings, bros. They're hearing rumors. They suck at investigation. Why? Kaya. Why? Bakit kaya? They hired a firm of private investigators, IGI, to watch the dealer and establish that he had some of the Marcos collection, including Goya's portrait of Marquesa de Santa Cruz. Very expensive, I think. Early in June 1992, the investigators discovered that the dealer had been warned that they were on to him. The next morning, they watched as five men and women of Filipino appearance turned up outside the dealer's apartment in two vans, loaded up boxes and large blue suitcases, and drove out to JFK Airport, where all five checked in as first-class passengers along with their unusual cargo. With no legal power to intervene, the investigators could only watch as they flew off to Manila. 
I might die reading this, okay? The pattern of impunity was set. In Seattle, in December 1989, a jury found that the Marcoses were implicated in a plot to murder two Filipino Union activists who had been shot there in 1981. The jury ordered them to pay 15.1 million US dollars compensation to the victims' families. The money has not been paid. In Hawaii, 1995, a court found the regime had abused the human rights of thousands who had been tortured and killed and ordered that Ferdinand's estate pay nearly $2 billion in compensation. Less than 1% of that has been paid. Having returned to Manila in September 1993, Imelda was convicted of personally refrauding the state in a land deal while Marcos was still in power. She was sentenced to 18 years in prison but bailed while she lodged an appeal. Five years later, the Supreme Court threw out her conviction on technical grounds, so the Supreme Court was part of it. Soon, the PCGG was running into more problems. As Marcos' allies found their way back into power and argued that the failure to retrieve more stolen money proved the commission was pointless and should be closed. Worse, the PCGG was tainted by the corruption it was trying to expose. So it was corrupt. It was the same thing. Some officials were caught exploiting empty Marcos properties and pocketing excessive expenses. Their job is to take from Marcos, but they're pocketing. Twice the weekend, PCGG made compromise agreements with the Marcos' family that were so generous, the Philippine courts blocked them. By the late 1990s, Imelda had been elected to the Philippine House of Representatives and was emboldened to give pro provocative interviews in which she declared, there's more money the government is not yet aware of and we own practically everything in the Philippines. Oh my God. Guys, please wake up. Huh? I'm just going to do this once. Increasingly secure, her confidence got the better of her. In 2007, she gave more interviews and posed for photographs that clearly showed eight of the missing paintings gleaming on her walls, including Goya's portrait. Another old master hung on the wall of her office of the House of Representatives. So she's getting elected in government position, okay? She's getting elected in government position, okay? The PCGG went to court for an order to recover them, but with the Marcuses opposing every move, the case took six years. When they finally raided Imelda's office in four of her homes in October 2014, they again found only pale patches on the walls where the eight paintings had once hung and Imelda crying into her handkerchief. <laughs> Even so, the PCGG has dragged some victorious out of the swamp. In 2004, they finally retrieved the money from the five Swifts accounts. It took, what, 30 years? At an even slower pace, they seized the assets of half a dozen crony companies and recovered most of the con coconut levy. Where is this money going? Where is the stolen money going? Back to who? They have auctioned paintings, jewelry, silver, and dozens of houses. In total, the PCGG has succeeded in retrieving $3.7 billion. That amounts to less than... Where, where did this go? That amounts to less than half the top estimate of what is was taken by Marcos alone. In spite of their efforts, they have watched this associates retire to a life self indulgence with most of their fortunes intact. They have dozens of cases still bogged down in the courts, including 22 that started in 1987 or earlier. It's delay, 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 delay. I'm, th I'm, I'm, not even, I'm thinking not even 10 billion. I'm thinking time stands so 30 or 40 billion at least. The head of the PCGG, Richard Amurau, is a con conspicuously decent lawyer, age 41, who spent five years as a commissioned commissioner before coming becoming chairman last year. He points out how a single piece of Imelda's jewelry could have paid for 2,000 young Filipinos to go to college. It's not important. He's not giving up, yet reflect that it has been exhausting and hard to see how they can win. It is like the traffic jams in Manila. You begin to accept that it just is this way. You don't accept the shit that is fucked up, okay? And fucked your country uh. to the fucking ground. You don't accept that shit, okay? Okay, Richard Amurao? Fucking, if I do some research on your fucking shit, you don't accept that. You change it. Deep in the vaults of the central bank, he says, there is a large collection of Imelda's jewelry due to be auctioned next month. It includes most, it's auctioned next month and, you know, Marcos's families are going to buy it again because they have so much money. It includes most of what was seized 30 years ago by U.S. Customs. Another stash found in the palace and a third intercepted at Manila airports as a friend of Imelda's attempted to fly out of the country. Last year, Christie's valued the collection they identified treasures that had previously been missed, including a tiara with 25 pearls in a diamond frame seized from the Russian Tsar's family in the 1918 revolution. It is estimated to be worth more than $4 million. Amurao's workers have invented their own word to describe anybody who is extravagantly greedy. 
ML Diffic. What will happen if Bong Bong Marcos is elect elected vice president? Will he, his, will he allow his mother access to the vaults to retrieve the jewelry she insists is hers? Will he kill the PCGG entirely? Bong Bong 58 started his political career before his family was exiled, becoming vice governor of Ilocos Norte province in 1981, aged 23. Six years after exile, he returned to become a congressman. He recently denied any involvement in the legal moves that had blocked so much of the PCGG's work. In February, Amurao issued a tough response, saying his claim was belied by court records show his involvement. He listed cases in which Bong Bong and his mother are still laying claim to what the PCGG says is ill-gotten wealth. Imelda is now 86 and actively campaigning for her son. The work is not finished, Amurao says. There's no statute of limitation on seeking justice, but the passing of time makes it more and more difficult to find new leads. Time is an ally for those who want us to forget. And if Bong Bong wins, we don't really see how we can do our work. Not with the son of the former president, only a heartbeat away from the presidency. This article, you have to read at least 10 times, okay? I want to translate this to Tagalog if I can. So the problem here is, guys, you know, you have these family politicians, and you think they're politicians, but they own the country. It's the truth, okay? They own everything. And they have connections to very powerful people that are just kind of like uh, the face of the business, but the real owners are the politicians. And they're all linked. Look, you got Marcos. I got this from uh, Korean uh, news. Marcos, and they're all in power, okay? Until now. After Marcos declared martial law and killed ten thousands and ten thousands of people and stole from your country, you elect you elect his son. You elect his son Because he said he has nothing to do with that. And also his daughter, no? Imelda uh, Maria, Imelda, and then Bong Bong. And then you have Aquino, right? So he, he exiled his... Uh, whoever is against him, he's going to kill them. Right? And assassinated him. And then you got Corazon. And then you got the Benigno. He's also president, president, president. Everyone's president. Also, this guy's going to be president soon, huh? And then Makapagal here. Pampanga, deba. Right? And then you got Gloria Arroyo Makapagal. Huh? So, and then they're all saying they're all corrupt together. They're all corrupt. They're all the same. Yes. Because it's like that day. Eh? It's no one is no one is governing that. It's so easy. The education is you know like getting worse. They're just using the the people as like you know as a just a, a shield. But under that curtain, sila sila lang lahat yung mga tao yung mga cousins yung mga kuya everything related they put everyone in power and then you, you make the money and then they share 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 this is what happened look this is the graph south korea from 1975 to 2000 goes up the gdp but 1975 philippines it's just like a flat line it's a flat line you you cannot say marcos or anyone else i don't even care if it's marcos marcos and all the presidents until now <laughs> They're improving a little bit. I, 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 I believe in Duterte. But it's not really improving, bros. Even compared to Malaysia and Thailand. Shit. And Philippines was the richest country before 1950s. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that graph. What is this? 1980 to 1990. Walang growth. Walang growth. This is a very extensive study done by uh, Shim Chi Q about the Korea and uh, you know the um, comparing the Korean economic development of Republic Korea and the Philippines since independence. I got this stuff. You guys can read it. I'm not gonna read this, but I just want to go to conclusion and say, bakit kaya? What what is the purpose of this of this uh, study and what he concluded? Um, it's very detailed about Park Chung Hee and all that, but the conclusion is when South Korea and Philippines achieved independence in 1948-1946, they achieved independence in a similar time. South Korea lagged far behind the Philippines in terms of economic performance. The gap even enlarged after the division of the Korean Peninsula into North and South Korea, so we had a fight about, 
and Korean War, in which the Philippines reaped large economic benefits in the 1950s, while South Korea was damaged because there was war, right? The positions in which South Korea and the Philippines stand today, however, are completely reversed as various economic indices and rankings indicate 2006 total tally of GDP by the IMF amounts $886 billion for South Korea and $117 billion for the Philippines. This is 2008. It's, it's 2006, okay? It's even worse now. The difference, maybe times 15. GDP per capita amounts $18,000 for South Korea and $1,000 times 18 per capita. And Global Competitiveness Indexes uh, announced by 2007 World Economic Forum ranked South Korea in the 11th place of the Philippines outside the 50th place. I'm not saying this is to improve, like I'm like yabangin or like trying to like you know boast about South Korea. I'm saying what the fuck, what? yo, all the presidents, the all the leaders of the country, the Philippines. What the fuck is this? This is your report card. This is your KPI. Aren't you embarrassed? Aren't you like thinking like what the fuck? Like okay, you're rich. You're doing drugs. It's okay, but fucking, let's make it good, the bad, the 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 country first, no? What? You want to see basura everywhere and traffic jam and you don't want to move? That's what I'm saying, okay? A comprehensive analysis of history, politics, and economics provides explanations to this miraculous reversal situation. First, different colonial and historical legacies of for Korea and Philippines lay a background for different growth. In Korea, 35 years of Japanese rule completely altered the existing Korean social order. So Japan played a, a role. Social stratification collapsed as a traditional aristocrats who based their power on land were deprived of their power source due to extensive land reforms. There was a land reform in Korea. So the traditional Maginoos couldn't do shit. Industrial focus began to shift from agriculture, so Korea was agriculture, to manufacturing as a result of forced industrialization and the reduction of agricultural labor. The Korean War that followed reinforced this trend as many people, regardless of class, were displaced from their homes. In hindsight, the removal of traditional order was fortunate in that there hardly was anyone with vested interest in de to deter economic development for his or her own sake. In contrast, decades of American rule of the Philippines were non-transformative. No one was changing. It was the same shit, same family, same magino. Owning, owing in part to collaborative Filipino elite ruling... I told you the first part of my video, go back to the history. There was Maginoos, there was the elites, they don't want to change. They said, fuck you, I want slaves, I want to be rich. Yep. And the ruling the Philippine economy. This Filipino elite, man, it's just there's a big problem with this. Americans saw little incentive in shaking the existing social order. Preservation of tradition certainly saw less confusion and more stability, but it was counterproductive for economic development as vested authorities resisted, resisted any change against their interests. For instance, one study has found that more than half of the members of Congress still hail from traditional political families. So half, everyone in Congress and Senate, they're all from the same traditional political elite families 60, 70 years ago. That's the problem. One of the problems. In addition, existence of external threat provided contrasting motivations for development. While South Korea have always been susceptible to the huge threat from her northern counterpart, the Philippines has always been relatively safe without any perceivable threat except for negligible internal insurrection. Different levels of sense of security gave South Korea a great incentive to develop to overplay North Korea, but gave the Philippines relatively little incentive to set economic development as a priority. So there's no incentive in the Philippines to develop uh, their country, but in South Korea, we want to boast that you know south korea is doing better than north korea because of the war and that gave us an incentive to really move forward and move fast and be a manufacturing leader and innovator uh, and wanting to be like rank you know one of the top economies of the of the of the world because the government thinks that that is something that is very important the philippine government does not think that that is very important unfortunately second in terms of political structure south korea had an upper hand over the philippines in general, democracy in developing countries is a whitewash. Xavier Sala E. Martin, the Columbia University economist, says the data show that the democracy doesn't help economic growth. Just doesn't help economic growth. Simply put, a communist government like of China doesn't have to worry about building consensus on economic policies while a multi-party democracy often prevents consistent economic policies. So it's so it doesn't mean that if you're a democracy, you're going to get economic growth because there's so many parties and there's going to be delay, delay, delay. Maybe perhaps, you know, uh, China, who is a communist country, can 
have a, a very solid plan and uh, follow those economic and fiscal monetary policies of the economy, right? Since her liberation, South Korea saw a pattern of authoritarian strong men. This fact may have prevented, prevented an early arrival of democracy to Korea, but it facilitated the legislation and implementation of continuous and coherent economic policies. Very important. One guy, leader, good, let's go. Okay, maybe corrupt too. Everyone is corrupt. I don't think anybody is perfect, but he had a goal. He said, let's do this. Let's build the buildings. Let's make good business. Let's, you know, have a five-year plan. Uh, we're consistently implement. It's consistent too. From 1960s to 99, despite the changes of regimes and a long-term solid back-scratching alliance of the government and big businesses known as Jebos could exhibit synergy. So the Jebos, the big businesses, were together with the economy, uh, government and let's build the economy together and be a freaking powerhouse in the global market, right? Because it works for them, it works for the government, it makes them look good and it's not embarrassing, right? And it's clean and it's, it's, it's just everything's good for the people too effect in driving the South Korean economy. In the Philippines, on the contrary, the democratic era lasted much longer than in South Korea during the period of 1950s. The democratic era in the Philippines, however, saw corruption, jurisdictional battles between the executive and legislature, so they're all fighting together, and a bureaucracy permeated outside by outside interests. The state, therefore, was unable to formulate consistent or coherent economic policy, so it's reversed. They can't do it. It's just changing and changing and changing and nothing's happening and they're pulling out and you know um, of projects and they're half building the roads, half building everything. When the ha Philippines finally became both more coherent and more autonomous from social interest groups under Marcos, so that's something that Marcos did, let's have a plan, the problem fell not on a lack of state strength but on the uses to which strength was put. So basically, if Marcos did not really, if he was thinking in a more different direction to improve the economy, the outcome would have been different, right? Thus, the quality of political... But they're saying, they're saying like, it was Marcus's fault, but they're not really saying it because they're scared too, right? That's how much money Marcus has. Thus, the quality of political leadership played a crucial role in both Korea and the Philippines. <laughs> Development stages. While both Park chung and Fernando Mar Marcos were corrupted in a sense that a collusive business or government relation existed during their presidential term, so they're both corrupted, the direction of the relationship was constructive for South Korea, but destructive for, for the Philippines. So... Yeah, Bar Chang could have been corrupted, but let's just still develop, okay? Okay, I got your back. Let's still develop. That was the goal. In Philippines, nope, that was not the goal. Let's just destroy everything. Let's put it all in my pocket. <coughs> okay? Damn! Although, so let's develop. I'll give you money. You get this and you build the road. That's Korea, right? Philippines, let's not develop. Give me the money and just half-ass your job. That was the, that was the direction. <coughs> Although... That a few troubles benefited and grew from exclusive privileges given to this to them is indisputable. Park Chung Hee, on the whole, directed his this exclusive business government relation towards the benefit of the entire country. Ferdinand Marcos, on the opposite, directed the relationship toward the benefit of himself and his associates. Park Chung Hee promoted the growth of Chabos as a means to drive forward the Korean economy, but Ferdinand Marcos used the power of the state to destroy the potentially dangerous elite families and their conglomerates. And ex appropriate wealth for himself and his cronies. In short, the Philippines had the potential to pursue a more disciplined development under Marcos, but he lacked any constraint on his excess, and the Philippines lost her opportunity to grow rapidly. Economically, South Korea acquired higher position in the Philippines in terms of amount of val available financial aid and usage of that development fund. Ranked within top five countries using the greatest amount of U.S. aid during the 1950s-90s, both South Korea and the Philippines were able to benefit from their geographic, geopolitical locations as the United States pursued the containment policy. However, South Korea garnered additional two main advantages, the Vietnam War and the compensation from Japan. Unlike Philippines' reluctance to dispatch troops, South Korea's enthusiastic participation in the Vietnam War not only confirmed strong South Korea and U.S. allies, but also harvested enormous financial and aid and economic opportunities for South Korean government as well as enterprises. So they participated in, in the wars and they got money from Japan and US. J Japanese compensation through financial grants and loans for physical and mental damage done to the colonial Korea also added as an advantage on South Korea's part. In addition to greater access to development fund, South Korea used the money more aptly. They used the money well. Unlike in the Philippines where the development fund fell into the wrong hands and pockets of Ferdinand Marcos so they even took 
the, the, the fund that was supposed to improve the economy, the fund that was like given because I'm sorry I killed 10,000 of your people, he put it in his pocket, okay? And Imelda Marcos, most of the fund was invested to modern industry, shifting the major industrial focus from traditional agriculture to more profitable manufactured goods. Phenomenal growth of, of South Korea that surpassed once more prosperous Asian neighbor of Philippines wasn't an overnight miracle. Rather, it was a long process of formation in which several factors, historical legacies, political situations, economic policies, and even personal qualities of leaders played their parts to bring out a grand outcome. The other part of the answer, besides from rapid growth of South Korea, was of course a disappointing economic performance by the Philippines. Though improved compared to the past, non-transformative nature of the Philippines still plagues the country. For instance, the vested interest by the landowner still remains unsolved. The Philippine economy is in need of innovation, not just from the economic perspective, but from the political perspective. South Korea, however, is not in any position to rest either. Jammed in between developed Japan and rising China, South Korea could also use some unprecedented innovations in order to become one of the leading economies of the world. My only concern now is that the government right now is President Duterte, right? And he is pro-Marcos, or not pro-Marcos, but he he uh, seems to be having some kind of connection with the Marcoses, okay? You know, I, I made this whole video and I'm not here to bash anything or anything. It's just my personal opinion reading off from some articles that probably is maybe true, maybe not true. I don't know. But the, the, the truth is that the Philippine economy did not develop. Uh, there's too much uh, inequality between the rich and the poor. Too much. Yes. There is uh, everywhere, but this is too much. And no one is really thinking of how to make shit better right in terms of traffic and pollution and stuff people are just gonna be dying right even without covid they're just gonna be dying so i believe duterte um is strong and is thinking in a good economic reform even if it maybe it might not work uh i hope he keeps pushing to have an economic reform and innovate that but i'm just kind of little concerned about the the you know when he put marcos uh, in the fun uh, the grave the the hero graveyard the grave hero's grave or something where he took that out and secretly did that so um i hope that it just is a one-time thing and i hope that there is no bullshit shit and when the time comes when duterte has to pick between country and his pocket he's gonna pick his country and i believe that based on what he's saying okay uh because if i don't believe that then there's no hope that i got for the philippines so i believe that and I have more power to him and uh you know i hope i can make more interesting kind of political economical videos for the future for anything that's happening and give my little two cents on it and uh, i see you guys next time with maybe uh, ayala or sm gonna dig into some uh businesses now and see what they are doing or what has been done peace oh can you see